were before. And we're talking about destroying uh, distractors. So I'm Shweta and um, I am, and thank you for posting it on the group Navnita. I am so grateful to you, immensely grateful. Like this is from the heart, thank you. So what else is possible? In, uh, what are distractors? What do they do? And how do they not allow to, you to create your life? Um, so, all right, I'm in, I'm in a bit of space right now. So what would it take for us to all expand out? Like just push your barriers down, look at whatever's going on in your world. And just for these, you know, this little while to play together, push your barriers down, expand out and ask, what is going to contribute to us today, all of us today, and to all the people who will be watching this in the future as well. So how, how many of us are really aware of what we would like to create as our future, or what we would like to create as our lives, yet instead of adding energy to what is going to contribute to it, how many times do we feed energy to all of these things that we call distractor implants in access consciousness, which are anger, anger, rage, fury, hate, love, sex, jealousy, peace, even business, um, blame, shame, when you regret something, when you go into guilt or something. So all of these things, these feelings per se, quote unquote, it just takes us into this space of not functioning from adding energy to that which creates our lives. Rather, what we're doing is we're feeding energy to all of these things that are uh, that seem so real, but they really aren't because you know you can actually change them like that. But we choose not to. So I wonder if any of you has a question. Uh, if you do, uh, whether or not you think it is related to the call, please feel free to put it up in the chat. But sometimes. Um, there is so much to talk about a topic, but your question kind of, or your input uh, kind of just takes us in the direction that probably everyone requires to hear today uh, or on this call. So another thing that I've been playing with is this energy of avoidance, okay? So, which is also a distractor by the way, you know? There are these things that we think we can't seem to handle we um, can't seem to bear, you know, like if you see too much misery or if you see too much poverty or if there is something that actually it's not even cognitive so many times. So uh, interestingly, and there was this thing that I noticed about myself well, uh, in the morning when I'm walking. So there's this new place that I start going out in the mornings. And um, while I was walking uh, towards the center, and notice that I would avoid looking at certain things. I would avoid looking at people who are probably staring at me or people standing at little stores having the chai and the nashta that people have in India. I'm sure all of us have seen that. And there are these couple of stalls uh, on my way where there are a couple of men there. I mean, nothing bad about it. They're just there. They have their chai ka thela, they have their poha ka thela. And um, there are some people who will come and have that breakfast or there'll be some music playing or there'll be a, you know, he puts this little dhoop, which I noticed. And another thing I noticed was that I didn't want to look at them, which was interesting. And I'm glad I noticed it because there was an energy of avoidance there, right? And I was like, okay, cool. What's really going on? What is stopping me from looking like really, like turning my head and looking these people in the eye, if they're looking at me or even if it's, even if they're not looking at me, what is stopping me from actually looking at this thing? Because I noticed that on autopilot, my head would just turn, oh, trying to avoid that, trying to avoid those men, trying to avoid that store, trying to avoid, avoid, avoid. So look at how many of us actually pay attention to what we're avoiding in our lives. And the energy of avoidance is, is something that definitely is not creation. It is the avoidance of creation because that is probably one of the energies that you're not willing to receive in your life. And that's also what distractors do. They distract you, they make you avoid, they take you in a space of not noticing, not paying attention. And what does that do? It actually cuts off your receiving. 
And anytime you cut off any energy from your life, you are cutting off the ceiling. Because as an infinite being, and again, I'm going to request you to just expand out, become the energy of the infinite being. This is something that really helps. So every time I'm going to keep reminding you, we've been doing that on these calls. So what if you could just expand out, expand out and expand out and become the energy space and consciousness and choice. You can do this with choice. Because another thing is, I'm going to come back to that avoidance thing. And actually, it's, it's just this, uh, this. I've already said what I wanted to say. I would actually request you to start noticing today what you're not willing to look at. Like simply look at, you know, turn your head and look at it. Look at that person that you're not willing to look at. Look at that relationship. Look at your money situation. Look at your finances. Look at your credit card bills. Look at it. You know, so what is it that you're trying to avoid? And is that really cutting off your receiving or is that adding to receiving? Which one? You see? So yeah, that and... It's another way of distracting ourselves from totally being present um, with our lives, with those things that make us uncomfortable. Because when you're trying to avoid something, it's, yeah, the receiving bit, of course, is there, but you're definitely not being present. You have a point of view there that's not making you look at it. So you might not get that point of view cognitively, but today, if you just played with, okay, hey, what am I not looking at? Just Pay attention to what your body's not turning to, where your eyes are not going, where you're just going like, you know, okay, I won't see this. <laughs> that. Gizu, you have a question. And, and what if you actually looked at that thing? You actually stopped and paid attention and turned and looked. And I did, I did. Yesterday and then today, I looked and that was it. And I really have no cognitive understanding right now of what changed with that. But yes, the, there was more peace in my world because how much energy are you using to resist and to avoid that which is desiring to contribute to you just because you can't cognitively understand it. So everywhere that you are actually avoiding, resisting, which is cutting off your receiving, which is not allowing you to be present in 10 second intervals, which is something we talk about in access, which means, okay, this 10 seconds, this present moment, what am I unwilling to receive? What am I not willing to look at? What is making me uncomfortable? And you'll be surprised that those are the energies that will also contribute to other areas of your life, your relationships, your business, your body, because you just can't cut off an energy only from one area of your life. Okay. So if you want, we can go deeper into that. I, you do had a question. So let's take that deeper. You want to ask? Yeah. Uh, actually, when you were uh, sharing your incident, I what I per perceived that I am in avoiding my children. Okay. And uh, I'll share an incident with you. Yesterday, what happened that uh, my son was talking to his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. and when I went inside, when I asked him, who am I talking to? He said, uh, I'm talking to him. And he was very, you know, uh, yeah. What you say he was very insecure that uh, I'm talking to my girlfriend and I and I and mm -hmm. I I felt so much of anger, so much avoided, so much rejected, and yeah, it, there was a lot of charge there. And thank you for bringing up this. Yeah. All right. So what's coming up for you? I mean, I felt so much uh, avoided and though I am there physically with my children, but what I perceive now that I'm in avoiding them, what they are doing, I don't want to look, look into their world and what they are doing. Yeah. The, yeah. The, what That's are actually a brilliant, brilliant uh, observation. You must congratulate yourself on your observation. So what is your question? What would you like to change? I would like to, what, what can I receive from them? Because I have I have cut off my uh, receiving from them. You've cut off your receiving from them or you've cut off your receiving of you because of your commitment to your children, because of you making them more valuable than you, uh, the being, you and your honoring of yourself. Which one? Yes. This one. Right. So this is something that usually happens when we make something more valuable than the five elements of intimacy, which is the honor, the trust, the allowance, the vulnerability, and the gratitude for ourselves. 
So great questions to ask would be, what would I choose here if I was totally being honoring of me? What would I choose here if I was being grateful for me? What would I choose here if I was, just hang on guys, one second, sorry. Can you hear the background noise? Or is it okay? It's okay. It's fine. I'm just going to shut this door. All right, that was my neighbors drilling something into their walls. And yeah, uh, you can count on them to not inform you beforehand. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, interesting point of view, I have a point of view. Yeah, so what I was saying was that if you made something more valuable than your own honoring of you, if you've made something greater, like what is your commitment here? What's your commitment to you? Because if you allow someone to talk like that to you, even if it's your own child, then you got to see whether it's working for you. There's no right or wrong there. But you see, you went into a wrongness of yourself because your child said something to you. And in doing so, did you, did you just go into, okay, fine, I will not intrude, fine, I will not do this, and I'm, I'm, I'm wrong for doing this. Uh, but you did not ask how it's not honoring of you, uh, what action can you take that is more honoring of you? You went into, oh, I'm cutting off my receiving from them. No, you're not. They are cutting off their receiving from you. Yeah. So what energy space consciousness choice can you be that would allow you to be all of you, no matter what judgment anyone throws at you, even if it's people that love you, even if it's people that care for you, that you never gave up on yourself, that you never gave up on the space that you be, because here's what happens. Somebody throws a judgment at you. You make yourself smaller. If you're wronging yourself, if you're going into that feeling of, uh, oh, I shouldn't have, or guilt or regret or any of those, those are distractors. Now you see in feeling all of that, did you just cut off all awareness of what is, what is, is possible here? How is this situation showing you something that you're not willing to be aware of? How is this situation showing you a way that you could step up? How many other places have you given up yourself so that others are comfortable? Yeah. So that they don't judge you? So that they don't say things to you that you're uncomfortable with? It's a similar energy to what I was talking about. It made you uncomfortable, that, that judgment, that Let's not even call it judgment. It was just something that was said to you as if it was a wrongness. Like, hey, you shouldn't be interfering. Oh, cool. Were you interfering? Or were you just asking a question? What were you doing? What were you choosing? And who yeah. gives somebody the right to talk to you like that, even if it's your child? Yeah. So everywhere that you're giving other people more precedence, more value, more significance, and you're committing to them and their lives because you've made it your job because you're the mother <laughs> or <Yes>. any, <laughs> any of those because it's all the points of view all the distractors guys you're going into because you're a mother because you're a wife because you're a woman because you're a man because uh, you're a husband because you're a, whoever's listening to it whatever role you decided you are in so how much of you are you cutting off because you've decided you are a mother a husband a wife a woman a man is that real and true or is that just a definition that you've given yourself so you can make yourself smaller go into a distractor and then not receive but the moment you've gone into a distractor you've cut off receiving you've cut off creation and then suddenly things get stagnant you wonder what happened i was doing so well and now i'm all sad and i'm feeling bad and oh my god these children don't love me or these people don't care for me whoa hello expand out Ask what would it take for you to show up as even greater than you've ever been willing to be? And notice what that changes with the people in your world. Are you willing to do that? Yeah. Awesome. So everything that is now that battery's gone.
Sorry, the battery's gone. Hello. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, you were saying something? No, I said thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome. So cool. So let's, what, what else would you like to change today? Where else would you like to go with this today? And uh, so here's the thing, actually, with the distractors, like um, I read out to you, I, I just gave you a brief, um, this thing of distractor and plants, what they are. And I do have um, a series of calls coming up uh, starting next week with the details of which are on the showing up as you group. I'll put it up on the creating a future WhatsApp group as well. We're going to be doing uh, two calls a week. There are six sets of destruction plants and we're going to be taking them up and looking at how we can change the energy. Uh, it's based on the book, uh, Living Beyond Distraction by Gary. Gary Douglas, founder of Access Consciousness. And it's beautiful, so many places, the way he explained why we choose these distractors, sometimes on autopilot, sometimes uh, it becomes an addictive pattern that we keep going to it over and over again, particularly if it's something like, oh, my children, because you've decided, oh, my children are my responsibility, my children, I have to look after them, or it's a relationship, or it's money, whatever. You just kind of go into, like the moment you're about to step up, the moment you're about to expand and become greater, you know, something will hit uh, you and you'll immediately tend to go back to that habitual pattern of the distractor, whether it's anger, whether it is... Um, blame shame whether it's a guilt thing and similarly a lot of people use even business and money as a distractor implant to distract them from other areas of your life like if you've seen a lot of people are just focused on money oh i have to have money i have to have money it's like an autopilot thing the business becomes um takes precedence over everything else and then the other areas of your life are really not a contribution or you're not present so what is it that you've created as a distractor in your life? And there's this beautiful episode that uh, Gary Douglas did with his daughter, Shannon O'Hara. If you go to Shannon's uh, podcast, he was talking about control. If I haven't mentioned this to you earlier, because I might have mentioned this to you, but I heard it like a couple of months back and it just blew my world apart. The way we do control is, is or the way control is done to us is so amazing. Like a lot of people do anger to control you. Okay. And the purpose of anger is uh, to make you feel small, to make you go back in your shell. So, you know, like when someone throws a statement like, like what we were just talking about, or when someone just says something to you at, with anger, you immediately go into your cocoon if you have a pattern and you go, oh my God, I must have done something wrong. You know, and you will go, so somebody else is using that anger to control you. And if you're not present with it, if you're not, if you don't know that it's a distractor implant, if you so it's not only that you're going into anger or you're going into guilt or you're going into blame. Uh, it could also be that other people are using these mechanisms against you. Like how many of you have been controlled with other people's guilt? How many of you have been controlled with other people's blaming and shaming you for what you're choosing, for what you're being? Right? And in, in that moment, if we are not present and if we don't destroy and uncreate the distractors, because the only thing you can do with a distractor implant, because it's an implant, it's not yours. It's been implanted into your world. Somewhere you learned to do it. Somewhere uh, you thought that's the way to exist because you didn't know better at that time. Maybe you were younger. Maybe you did it in another lifetime. We have no idea where it started. But the beauty of the clearing statement in Access Consciousness is when you run the clearing statement and say, okay, all the distractor implants here, you can do it. You can start doing it now. Anywhere that, like, let's say you're going into anger to control someone else, because you might have done it too. <laughs> I'm not saying only other people are doing it to you. Or you're going into guilt to control other people or vice versa, like somebody else is doing it to you. Either ways, it's taking you into making yourself smaller, not being as big as you are, because would an infinite being have feelings? Would an infinite being go into any of these things as if they need these things to control people or to control this reality? No, but an infinite being would be willing to use these things to their advantage to create a greater reality, to create more consciousness, to create a greater future on the planet. Like, for example, if you see a child walking on the road, like Gary gives this example, he saw this, uh, he saw Dane almost walking on the road and he shouted loudly, you know, that sounded like anger. Hey, no, stop. You know, it sounded loud. It sounded like anger, but that was potency. 
And that actually stopped him dead in his tracks because he went, oh, what happened? And if he had not stopped Dane, there was a lorry going right uh, in front of him. It might have hurt him. So a lot of times if, so if, okay, cool. <laughs> a lot of things going on here in my head. What I'm trying to say is if you get a hang of how these energies can be used, this was just a small example. If you get a hang of what's really going on with these distractor implants of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going into the first two sets, which is anger, rage, fury, hate, and um, blame, shame, regret, and guilt. Those are the first two sets of the distractor implants and access consciousness. So just take that example because those energies are like literally everywhere. Even relationship is a distractor implant, by the way. Have you seen like when people just get married and they're just newly engaged, they'll shut off everything else as if that relationship means the whole thing <laughs> to them and then nothing else exists. And that is a distractor when you're eliminating something else from your life. So what I'm saying is if you start to get a hang of distractors, what they are, love, sex, jealousy, peace, also another set of distractors. Notice how love is used to control you. I love you and so do this for me. You love me, so won't you do that for me? I think you should give that up because you love me. This is a way to control. So the purpose of a distractor implant is not only to limit you, it is also to control you, to make, to diminish you. So if you begin to educate yourself on what it is, how you can change it, be more present. And as much as you use the clearing statement, as much as you do the access tools, you start to become more and more present with, okay, what's really going on? Is this person throwing anger at me to control me? Because if you don't do that, then you have to, out of no choice, go into a reaction. And the moment you started reacting, oh my God, again, you've gone into something that's not gonna help you create and not taking action. Does that make sense? So everywhere that you're choosing reaction, everywhere you're choosing distractors, everywhere that you're buying into any of that is real rather than asking, okay, what do I know about this? How can I use this to my advantage? How can I use this to create a greater world? How can I use this to contribute to my life living in reality and to everyone else who truly is asking for more consciousness? If you start doing that, what's going to change? What's going to be different? And everything that does not allow you to know we perceive and receive that will you destroy and uncreate. Right wrong with bad pop up online show boys and beyond. So does that make sense to you guys? Do you have any questions? And you're welcome to join in uh, if you like. If you choose, uh, send me a text. Join in the 12 call series that uh, I'm starting. I'm going to be doing it, I think, two days a week or three days a week. I'm not sure. I'll have to check myself. Probably two days a week in six weeks. And we're going to be covering all distractor implants. Um, look at how we can use these energies to create a greater reality, not let people use it against us to control us. Right? So how many of you are going into distractor implants as if by default, as if on automatic pilot, rather than choosing to be greater than anything you've ever been willing to be? that will allow you to create a greater reality with total ease and everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and uncreate it? Right wrong with bad, but for color shorts, boys and beyonds. So please start to be present with um, all the distractors that are being used to control you or maybe you got into as real and true. Instead of going into the wrongness of, oh, I get angry and I don't have control over my emotions or I get sad, just begin to notice that these are the, and feelings actually, feelings are big distractors. So if you're going into a feeling, notice when you're doing the feeling thing, are you going into um, creation mode or are you going into destruction mode, right? So please begin to observe. So I'm just going to read out the list of the, if you want, the distractor implants. They are anger, rage, fury, hate. So they have come in sets of four. Anger, rage, fury, hate, they kind of go in together. Like when you're angry, sometimes you go into a fury, sometimes you go into, oh, I hate this person. Have you noticed? It's, it's easy from anger to go into hate to, so it's like, it just keeps looping into one another. That's why it's a set of four. It's like a hamster wheel, I like to say. Uh, noticed a hamster, the people keep pet hamsters and they have these little toy wheels inside. The hamster will keep rolling on it, thinking I'm getting somewhere, I'm getting somewhere, but where's he getting? <laughs> Nowhere. He's still there. He just thinks he's going somewhere. That's what we do. It's like a dog running around chasing his tail, not getting anywhere. So the moment you've gone into uh, a distractor implant, 
you've just become this little dog that's chasing his tail. And if you have that visual, maybe you'll be more present and say, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Okay, so what would it take for this to change and destroy and uncreate all distraction plants here? Okay, that, that is something that you can begin with, start saying, okay, all the distraction plants here, destroy and uncreate, even if you don't know which one it is, it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of access, right? You don't have to cognitively figure it out. So that's the first one, anger, rage, fury, hate. Second one, like I said, uh, is blame, shame, regret, and guilt. So when somebody blames you, do you have to go to shame from that? Do you have to go to guilt? Do you have to go into uh, why the hell did I have to do it? Or I didn't do it. Or maybe if you look at something in your life and you go, I could have done that, but I didn't. Then you go into regret and then you have to blame someone. Oh, they didn't let me. Oh, my childhood was so bad. And when you go into that again, notice, are you creating? Or have you gone into destruction? destroying your future because now you're feeding energy to that you know your point of view creates your reality so wherever you put your energy that's what's going to grow so if you're feeding energy into blame shame regret and guilt well you'll find more people to blame you'll go more into guilt so it's now the time to change that then there is another distractor implant set which is called addictive compulsive obsessive and perverted points of views so these could involve uh, not only addictions but it could be any points of views that you go to out of an addiction, you know, like let's say you're fond of blaming yourself, you're fond of judging yourself. A lot of us are. Sometimes we go into, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? So you see, again, you're going from, um, you keep jumping from one distraction plan to another also. So you've gone from guilt, regret, to now you've gone to, oh, that habitual pattern, that ad addictive compulsive point of view of I have to judge myself or I have to judge someone else. Just an example. And there are a lot of them, by the way. So, that's the third one. And the fourth one is love, sex, and jealousy, and peace. And we all know that I just spoke about how love is used to control you, how everybody has a different definition of love. And they'll tell you um, how you should be loving them. And if you're not, or you have these points of views, like you were just talking, oh, I love my children. So this is what I have to do with for them. And even if they're not nice to me, I have to put up with it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not doing something. And what are you creating in that? Is that honoring of you? Does that make you happy? And if you're not happy, why are we living if you don't wanna be happy, you see? So what would it take for you to choose joy, choose beyond the distractors, destroy and uncreate them, really? And we've been living our lives so long in these patterns that it might take a while for them to go. And that is why Gary also suggests that once you do these like get, get out this book, uh, if you have it, if you don't have it, buy it, please. It's called Living Beyond Distraction. And just read all the clearings and put them in a loop for at least six months. And I did that, like I did that about five years ago. And I let it run for six months. So what would it take for you to, that's what also we're gonna be doing uh, in the six week series. Like we will be doing the clearings online and also on audios. So you can put them on a loop and run them on a loop for six months and see what that changes for you, okay? So love, sex, jealousy, peace is another one. Um, jealousy, you know, just takes you out of creation. You're just worried about someone else, what they're doing or someone else's jealousy when it is impacts you in your world. What does that do if you're not interesting point of view there, right? We have to go into reaction by default. Again, gone to addictive, compulsive point of view of, oh, I have to react, right? Uh, cool. So another one is death, life, death, living, and reality. Okay. And uh, that is a little deeper. So we do that on the calls if you're joining in. And the last one is fear, doubt, business, and relationship. We all know how when we go into fear, we stop ourselves, do we? Or we jump, take the leap. No. When we get scared, we tell ourselves, what's in yoga? And then somebody else will feed you another night. How will you do it? You see? So the moment you go and then say, oh, forget it. You know, I'd rather not. I'm okay in my comfort zone. I'm okay. I don't want to. That is where we stop ourselves from actually creating our lives again. So fear is again instilled in you. It's implanted in you. And by the way, a lot of times also fear could be excitement if you know that too. Like ask, is this fear or is it excitement? Because they have similar energies. Like for example, if you were excited about something when you were a kid, you wanted to go on stage, you wanted to go on a roller coaster and somebody said, don't be scared, it's gonna be okay. And it's like, oh, this energy is fear. I didn't know. So you start confusing fear with excitement. So anytime you're telling yourself you're fearful, you're scared, please ask yourself, am I scared 
really? Is this mine? Or is it just excitement? Am I excited about this? And if it is still fear, you know, once you start clearing the distractor implant there, then you might be willing to do it anyway. It could just be a slight discomfort because you've never done it before. Or maybe somebody in your family was afraid of doing what you're choosing now and you took it on from them and you went, oh my God, I'm scared because you're the psychic antenna and you think you're scared. So there are all of these different ways to handle fear, uh, use these tools. And also there are a lot more when we dive deeper into fear, doubt, business and relationships and relationships we just spoke about how when you actually just enter a new relationship or you'll say, no, you know, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a husband, I can't do that. I can't choose, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you stop creating your life because of this relationship. Well, if it is a relationship that is contributing to you, will it stop you from creating your life or will it add to it? Never are taught to ask that. We're always told to compromise, to give up just so that the relationship can survive. How many of you are happy in those relationships that are just surviving? And it could be with anyone. It could be a mad relationship. It could be a relationship with your friend. It could be a relationship with, you know, your relatives, with, a, with somebody who's been mean to you for a long time. But you're like, you have a point of view that, oh, it's a relationship. I can't let go of it because that makes me a bad person, blah, 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 blah. And just got yourself out of, into a distraction plan, out of creation into a distraction plan. Okay. So that is actually what I wanted to bring to you guys to become present with what are you avoiding? Where are you going into a distractor and plant? So maybe you can also make a list of all of these distractor and plants. And anytime something pops up, just go pop and pot on it. Just go, okay, cool. Is this, 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 this. Even if you don't get a cognitive understanding of what it is, if you do, great. If you don't just say, okay, all the distractor and plants here and everything underneath that destroy and uncreate, right? Because there are all of these other energies that hold the implant together. Okay, so I hope that helped. I hope that made sense to you guys. And what is it that you're avoiding? What is it that you're resisting being? Like avoidance is an energy of resisting being as well. What are you avoiding in your life? What are you resisting being that if you were willing to be or that you didn't resist anymore would actually allow your life to become greater than you ever thought it would be or could be everything that is, everything that doesn't allow that. Will you destroy an uncreative world? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, online, shows, poison, here. So please start playing with that as an active step. Today, starting today, what am I not looking at? What am I avoiding? Where are my eyes not going? And, you know, this is a simple exercise. Just look at it. Look at it. You don't have to do anything. Look at it and go, okay, whatever is making me uncomfortable here, pop and pop, destroy and uncreative that. Use the clearing statement. And see what that changes in your world. So Distract and Plants is also part of the foundation class, which I'll be facilitating in Bombay end of this month. In case you guys know somebody who would like to join in the last four days, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, or 28th, 29th, 30th, whatever, last four days of October uh, in Mumbai and online. So if anyone's interested in creating greater, because foundation is a four-day class after the Access Bars class, which will actually give you so many more tools to begin to create your life rather than avoid it. So how many of you are avoiding life rather than creating? And everything that is, would you destroy and create all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, and enjoy, poison, nails. How many of you are avoiding your own power, capacity, and potency rather than owning it and enjoying it? Everything that is, would you destroy and create it all? Right and wrong, good and bad, pop and pop, online shows, boys and beyonds. And what would it take for you to be so uncomfortable that it changes everything in your life for the greater? Because there's another thing that we don't want to be, which is being uncomfortable. And if you're not willing to be uncomfortable, notice again, there's an energy of avoidance. There's an energy of resistance. So please do at least three uncomfortable things every day. <laughs> what would that take? What would that change? Because we keep asking for change, but we want to be in our comfort zones. So if you're asking for change, if you're asking for greater, go ahead. Destroy those distraction plans. Get to creation. Be willing to be uncomfortable. Stop avoiding. And be present with what is it that you're avoiding? Where are you going into no creation zones? And just being present sometimes, just asking questions around that 
starts to open up possibilities for you that you might not be able to imagine right now. So get to it, get to work, uh, ask questions, open possibilities, choose greater. And what else is possible, guys? Thank you so much for being here on this call today. Um, thank you for bearing with the slight time delays. And so grateful for each one of you for being here, for choosing whatever you're choosing. See you again next Thursday or somewhere else or on the Distracting Plants call or in the Foundation class or wherever you choose. So bye-bye and take care.